Hey guys, you may not know it, but this is actually the second time that I'm recording this. Uh, I checked out the first recording and the audio was just terrible, way too low. Uh, in fact, let me take a good close look. Okay, looks like, looks like I'm okay. I'll try and speak closer to the mic, um, but uh, looks like it's okay for right now. What I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to go over the um, work that I had last given you and discuss some of the work that will be coming up. I know that officially it's Easter week, uh, but I got all caught up in things last week and I wasn't able to keep up with you. And to be honest, we don't know what's going to be happening uh, in the next coming months. We might have an extra long Easter, so it's important that we keep our minds sharp, keep our brains firing, and it's also important that we just get over this uh, novel once and for all so that we can finally move on to something else. So I wanted to uh, look over the work that we had uh, last week and I also wanted to um, talk about what's coming up which will be another instance of the Say Mean Matter exercise. If you guys remember back in the beginning of the semester we did a Say Mean, Manor, Say mean Matter exercise in which I asked you guys to summarize what a uh, passage was saying I asked you to paraphrase what it meant, um, and I asked you to discuss, uh, using your own thoughts, your own ideas, why it mattered, why was it important, why was it important that the author gave us this information. So it'll be another exercise just like that, a bit more complicated because we've both, we've all gotten a bit more complicated, haven't we? Our skills have developed, um, our knowledge has developed, so we need to develop our expression as well. But for now, uh, let's look at the classwork that we had last time. And um, uh, the last time we had some checking understanding questions, and that was also sort of one of my first attempts at putting together uh, an online assignment of this type. And as you can see, what I was expecting was for everyone to have something a bit like Diane has, where they sent me back a copy of the uh, online exercise, but it looks like it doesn't quite work that way. Diane sent me back a copy simply because she was the first one to finish it and everybody else uh, got their answers um, collected in a different way. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like by clicking on the assignment itself. Remember that your view is a bit different from my view. You guys probably see something like this. Uh, and in fact, the first time you saw it, you probably didn't see this email address setting because I um, only put in the requirement for that afterwards when I realized what was happening. And what was happening was that it was collecting this information anonymously. So I couldn't tell who was replying um, to what. But based on your writing, based on some of the ideas that I saw, and later on, based on the uh, email addresses that I collected, I was able to tell who was responding to what. Um, this is the view that I usually see, uh, which includes a responses section. So let's just take a look at that. Right, uh, and as you can see here, I've graded most of you guys who sent in with emails. Some of you have sent in without emails. Um, not sure what to do with that, but I've already um, sent in some work here. We've got, we've got an ungraded one. I think it is graded, but I just haven't returned the score. Um, so let's see what we have. Tariq W. Now, first I thought maybe this was Tariq Henry, and it was Whitney using uh, that account, but maybe not. I, I don't know. If anybody knows who this address belongs to, uh, please let me know. But let's see what they got. Who is Dolphus Raymond, and why does he pretend to be drinking liquor? Um, and the response we have here is, he is a wealthy white man who lives with his dark mistress and mixed children. Ooh, that's pretty, pretty intense, I think. Uh, let's see how this stands up to our online check. And... As I told you guys in the last video, a really handy dandy trick is that uh, anything that you put in Google, you can surround 
with quotation marks. Come on. Come on, Google. Google's not working for me there. Um, but let's surround it with quotation marks, and that way we can see if this exact phrase appears anywhere else. Hmm. He's a wealthy white man. Uh, he's a black mistress? Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so maybe just some fancy words, but not that exact phrase. So good job. Pass the test. Okay. Um, uh oh. Uh, okay, a wealthy white man who lives with his dark mistress and mixed children. Uh, Dolphus explains to Scout and Jem, we capitalize those proper nouns, please, explains to Scout and Jem that he only pretends to be drunk to give the other white people an explanation for his lifestyle. Um, so, we have who he is, uh, and we have why he pretends to be drunk. Excellent job, five out of five. Dolphus Raymond, as you guys may know, uh, is um, maybe not wealthy, but he is from an old family, which some might equate to wealth in some in some way. Uh, he's from an old family in Maycomb, and he uh, walks around all day with a brown paper bag and a bottle in it, and he's always sipping from a straw in that brown paper bag. And when Jem explains it, he seems pretty certain that that brown paper bag contains a bottle of whiskey. Um, but later on, we find out that it's just Coca-Cola, and he's just pretending to be around drinking all day. And why does he do that? Well, it's so that people don't bother him. It gives other people an excuse to talk about him uh, and not give him a hard time for deciding to live with uh, a, a colored woman and have children um, in the colored community. An interesting trick, I think. Why does Jem feel confident that Atticus will win? Our response here, Jem feels confident because he sees the truth in the trial. Uh, and I, I may have showed my hand there. What truth are we talking about? What truth are we talking about when we say that Jem sees the truth in the trial? Well, that truth could be one of two things. Uh, or it can be these two things. It could be that Atticus is a darn good lawyer and he's laid out quite a defense for Tom Robinson. In fact, the evidence that Atticus has put together is so solid that it seems just obvious that, um, that, that Tom Robinson did not compete, did not commit this uh, crime. Uh, the other truth that he could be seeing um, was that, uh, uh, in fact, it was um, Myla Ewell's father uh, who actually roughed her up and beat her and left those bruises on her. Uh, and the physical evidence uh, is, is apparent there. So Jem feels confident that Atticus will win because Atticus has laid out this um, rock solid defense and because uh, the physical evidence points to uh, not Tom Robinson, but Bob Ewell as being the perpetrator. As they wait for the verdict, Scout thinks of, an earlier, of earlier events. What is she thinking of? And the response that we got is that she thought of cold February mornings, Miss Marty's new house, and when Atticus shot the mad dog. Uh, the first time I recorded this, I was actually looking at Dylan's answers, um, and Dylan included a bit more detail. It wasn't just Miss Marty's new house, it was the instance that she required a new house. It was the time that her house burned down and the entire community came out uh, to support her. That uh, is essentially a parallel that Scout is making. Scout is making a connection of ideas. This time it's hot, but she's remembering that February morning uh, when Miss Molly's house was on fire because the entire community was involved in this issue uh, and it was a high stakes issue. There, were, uh, there was a lot on the line. And this time, it's happening again. The entire community is out, and they're involved in this high-stakes issue in which uh, a person's life is on the line. Scout was also thinking of when Atticus shot the mad dog. Uh, and if you guys remember, that was also in February. And that mad dog didn't just represent 
a mad dog, it represented a threat, a threat to their community. Uh, if Atticus had missed, that dog would have probably uh, gotten frightened, gone running into someone's house, attacked them there in the street. Uh, but Atticus was the um, old Deadeye Finch. He was the, the, the sharpest shot in all of Maycomb, the best uh, shooter in all of Maycomb. Um, and it was clear that he was the man for the job. This time around, uh, there is a threat to the community, not an existential threat like the dog represented, not something that could kill them, but something that would change them forever. Uh, if this trial went the way that it was going, then it was quite possible uh, that it would change the way people in Maycomb saw one another. Um, and Atticus was the only one who would be able to stand up against that. Why does Reverend Sykes tell Scout to stand? What's our response? He tells Scout to stand because Atticus is walking by them. This is out of respect for Atticus. Again, guys, capitalization on those proper nouns, but pretty spot on. Now, this question could have been a tricky one because it is not said explicitly. Um, this is an instance in which I ask you to infer a response rather than simply interpreting the words that are written. I want you to come up with the idea. What is between the lines? What is being said? Um, what, is being, what is being discussed, but not necessarily what's being said? Reverend Sykes never says, show some respect for your father. He simply says, stand up, Miss Jane Louise, your father's passing. Uh, so... In asking why Reverend Sykes does that, I'm asking you to come up with a reason, come up with an understanding of what is going on here. Why are these people standing as Atticus is leaving the courtroom? Uh, and you will, of course, note that it is only a particular group of people, only the Negroes, the ones up in the balcony, the ones separate from the rest of the community, and the ones who have not received justice here. But why do they stand for him? Um, simply because he tried. It's very clear that he tried his absolute best. They respect him for that, and they believe that his children should follow that example of respecting a man who has tried his absolute best, even when the entire community is against him. Who sends food over to the Finches, and why? The black community sent them. Uh, they did it out of appreciation for what Atticus did for Tom. Excellent answer, complete full points. Um, the black community, not just Tom Robinson's family, but the entire community, sent over food to the Finches, um, and they had quite the spread. Maybe not as great as the picture that I included here, which looks like maybe a Christmas or a Thanksgiving um, meal. And on the side here, we have some Brussels sprouts. Oh my gosh, guys, I've just discovered Brussels sprouts just before the quarantine, and I wasn't able to get any in my stockpile but, oh, oh mwah, Brussels sprouts. Man, if anybody sends me Brussels sprouts, they'll be my friend forever. Um, the, the one thing that isn't mentioned is that um, Atticus responds to this in a particular way. He tells Calperny to tell them to never do this again, which may seem like he was ungrateful, but there's a particular reason for doing that. And uh, I'm gonna give cookie points. I'm gonna give bonus cookie points. Next time I see you, you get a pack of cookies. If you can tell me, either in the comments in this video or on our classroom stream, um, why does Atticus say, never send me those, never send this thing again, uh, never do this again? What reason does he give? Not, not just what reason does he give, what justification does he have for refusing this kind of gift? Um, if you can tell me that, then uh, next time I meet you, I've got a pack of cookies for you. In what way did Judge Taylor try to help Tom Robinson? This is another inference question. It's never outrightly said, uh, although I do think it is sort of mentioned at the end of chapter either 22 or 23 um, in, a, in a discussion with Scout. Um, Tom Ro Judge Taylor uh, did play a part in trying to defend Tom Robinson, in trying to help him through this ordeal. Um, now, if you understand the court system, uh, even in Belize, even though he's a judge, this is a criminal trial and it is tried by a jury. Uh, and so the judge can simply um, keep order in the court, but it is the jury that comes to the decision 
of what happened. So whether or not Judge Taylor thought that this man was innocent or guilty um, doesn't really play a role, uh, but he can do something to try and um, to try and, and, and sway that judgment, to, to try and convince a jury uh, as to Tom Robinson's innocence without explicitly interfering. Let's see what uh, response we came up with. Well, we can't really see it behind my big head. Uh, he gave Tom Robinson Atticus's, Atticus, a lawyer, who would give him a chance at winning the case. Uh, if we think back to the beginning of the novel, to, to just around the first part of the novel, before the trial starts, uh, there is a conversation between Atticus and Judge Taylor. This is what this is the, the moment that uh, this still was taken from in the movie. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, but in the movie uh, and in the novel, Judge Taylor visits Tom Robinson, be visits Atticus Finch, sorry, before the trial. Uh, and they have a conversation. And Judge Taylor makes it very explicitly clear that he wants Atticus to defend this man. Uh, why does he do that? Uh, is it just because Atticus is smart? Not necessarily. There are other smart lawyers in Maycomb. There are other smart lawyers uh, in this the, uh, uh, court circuit. But he does this because he knows that Atticus is a man of principles. He is a man uh, of certain values. Uh, and Atticus is our model for integrity in this case. Uh, it's not just that Atticus thinks that Tom Robinson is innocent. Atticus thinks that Tom Robinson deserves a fair trial, which, if we remember, a lot of the people in Maycomb don't think that. If we can think back to uh, Atticus sitting in front of that courthouse, sorry, sitting in front of that jail uh, in order to protect Tom Robinson when that mob shows up, uh, that mob wasn't interested in a trial. They were interested in dealing out their kind of justice before the trial ever happened. Uh, and everybody in Maycom, including his own family members, criticized Atticus uh, for trying to defend um, Tom Robinson. So Judge Taylor made sure that Atticus was involved in the defense of Tom Robinson because he was confident that with Atticus's uh, sense of integrity, with his sense of values, that Tom Robinson would have gotten a good, solid defense. Um, so, a good job overall by this person. I think it might be Leon. I know he mentioned before that there was a, um, a maybe not a problem, but an issue with his um, uh, email address that it was not in his full name. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick calculation. Let's see, that's a 28 out of 30. Uh, that's a 93. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see if I can find him again. Uh oh, here we go. A 93. Oh man, so many different names this guy. But let's put it in here. Can it just be simple? Yep, yeah, 93% for our good friend Leon. Um, and I think that's all of them. Raphael is missing. Maybe not missing. Maybe I just, um, as I mentioned when I first put it up, uh, there were grades that were unmarked that did not include an email address. So I'm just not able to find which one is yours right now. Um, but it's okay. I'm going to make sure I deal with that. Tout suite, which is French for real quick really is though. Uh, for now, let's talk about our next assignment. Uh, and if we look in our classwork area, I've got a couple um, drafts ready. Uh, the first is a reading assignment, um, which I'm going to make live in just a minute. I'll add that to the Kill a Mockingbird uh, section. Uh, and I'm going to post it. It's pretty simple. All you gotta, just got to do is read up to chapter 25 on your own. I've included the links to our uh, readings, reading pages on YouTube, not ours, but uh, the ones that we found and that we've been using. 
Let me know if you think these are helpful or if you'd like me to find something else. Um, and once that is up, I will also include a say, mean, matter assignment. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. The last time we did it, they were very short excerpts. This time, they're a bit longer. Uh, in each case, we have an excerpt. Um, we have a section in which you are asked what this text is saying. In other words, I need you to paraphrase, or sorry, I need you to summarize what this text is talking about. Next, what does it mean? This time you paraphrase, and you, in your own words, you explain to me what is happening here, what is this trying to explain? And then finally, why does it matter? What is the importance? So what? Why should we care about what is being said here? Uh, I'm going to ask you to flex those analytical muscles just a bit and, and try and come up with um, an explanation of why you think this text matters, why is this important, what impact does it have on the reader or, our, or on our understanding of the events in the novel, the setting, or even the themes overall, or just life in general maybe. Um, why does this text matter? Why is it important for the author to send that, send that to us? There are four excerpts in total. Um, you guys can send those all in. I will make that live, not today, but probably by Wednesday, giving you enough time to do some reading. Uh, that's pretty much all we've got for right now. Um, uh, a few things we want to discuss. Let me know if you think we need to do a uh, online meetup and we can probably do something like a watch party. Uh, I'm not sure if it's completely legal, but I, I'm, the movie is pretty old, so I can see if uh, we're able to stream it to one another online. We're not charging anything. This is purely for educational purposes, so we should be okay. Uh, and it's just uh, between us. It'll probably just be on our um, classwork stream in a uh, hangout session. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. I can schedule that and set it up. Um, and let me know if you have any questions, any other concerns, or if you just want to talk. Um, we have our WhatsApp group, and we have our online class group. Um, it'll be really useful for us to keep in touch, keep engaged, keep our minds flowing. Um, for now, stay safe, stay inside, wash your hands, even though you're inside. Yeah. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.